Go, Captain. From me, greet the Danish king. Tell him that by his license, Fortinbras craves the conveyance of a promised march over his kingdom. You know the rendezvous. If that his majesty would aught with us, we shall express our duty in his eye, and let him know so. I'll do it, my lord. Go softly on. Good sir, whose powers are these? They are of Norway, sir. How purpose, sir, I pray you? Against some part of Poland. Who commands them, sir? The nephew to all Norway, Fortinbras. Goes it against the main of Poland, sir, or for some frontier? Truly to speak, and with no addition, we go to gain a little patch of ground that hath in it no profit but the name. To pay five ducats five, I would not farm it, nor will it yield to Norway or the Pole a rank a rate should it be sold in fee. Why, then the Polak never will defend it. Yes, it is already garrisoned. Two thousand souls and twenty thousand ducats will not debate the question of this straw. This is the imposthume of much wealth and peace that inward breaks and shows no cause without why the man dies. I humbly thank you, sir. Goodbye, sir. Wilt please you go, my lord? I'll be with you straight. Go a little before. How all occasions do inform against me and spur my dull revenge. What is a man if his chief good and market of his time be but to sleep and feed? A beast, no more. Sure, he that made us with such large discourse looking before and after gave us not that capability and godlike reason to fust in us unused. Now, whether it be bestial oblivion or some craven scruple of thinking too precisely on the event, a thought which quartered hath but one part wisdom and ever three parts coward, I do not know why yet I live to say this thing's to do, sith I have cause and will and strength and means to do it. Examples gross as earth exhort me. Witness this army of such mass and charge, led by a delicate and tender prince whose spirit, with divine ambition puffed, makes mouths at the invisible event, exposing what is mortal and unsure to all that fortune, death, and danger dare, even for an eggshell. Rightly to be great is not to stir without great argument, but greatly to find quarrel in a straw when honour's at the stake. How stand I, then, that have a father killed, a mother stained, excitements of my reason and my blood, and let all sleep, while to my shame I see the imminent death of twenty thousand men, that for a fantasy and trick of fame go to their graves like beds, Fight for a plot whereon the numbers cannot try the cause which is not tomb enough and continent to hide the slain. Oh, from this time forth, my thoughts be bloody, or be nothing worth. 